Hello and welcome to a new video related to the Philips CD555 sound machine. I know I've done an unboxing video a couple of months ago, but this sound machine did not belong to me. It was used and unfortunately not complete. And right one month after I finished the video, I finally found for what I was searching for decades, a complete and absolutely unboxed and never used CD555. Therefore, I think it's absolutely worth to make a new video and to share this with you. Um, for those who are only interested in an unboxing video, I will make some timestamps and go there, have some fun. Uh, for all others who are a little bit more interested in the machine and how I got it and the history, I will tell a little bit. I haven't produced a video for a couple of months. I've got very busy last year left the company after 28 years and starting a new job it was very time consuming. I also got married and preparation for marriage also takes some time, but I was also very busy uh, developing new hardware for the sound machine. I finished my microcontroller board for the CD player and the tape mechanism. Oh, took a lot of time, got at the end a little bit expensive. Um, I learned a lot with reverse engineering, how to communicate with the CDM2 drive, uh, the CD player inside, and also how the tape mechanism works and all the uh, flows and drawbacks. Um, I'm also working on a new power supply panel. It's the prototype. It's basically working. It does not look nice anyway, um, because the power supply panel often fades here and those who know the machine they know this breaks frequently mine back in 1986 broke after six months it ended up where most of the machines ended up in the dump got just thrown away and probably this is one of the reasons why this machine is so rare today and even rarer if you find one that is working and Maybe that's my hobby to make it more reliable. My others are collecting stamps. I'm doing this kind of stuff. Anyway, it's it's fun for me. I found this sound machine on a second hand market, an online market in Austria. The owner sadly passed away. I was lucky enough to be fast enough and to be insane enough to spend a small fortune for that. I was searching decades for a brand new device. I always thought there must be some someone left in, in a stock or, or forgotten somewhere. And basically that's kind of uh, an item that was bought and stored somewhere and forgotten. It was never used. You will see it's in perfect condition, never even plugged into the power part on. It is brand new. That's that's a complete flashback as if you would go into a market in 1986, grab the device and buy it. That's how you got it. The, even the box is in a quite nice condition considering its age. 1986 is some time ago already. So almost 40 years. Well, it is an, an, a really nice uh, Sound machine, it does not look like all these uh, ghetto blasters from the 80s. It's really an, a nice design, a nice color. And I think it was very important for Philips because you can see them in a lot of commercials back in those days. It was the first uh, portable CD player. I don't want to say worldwide because there was also one in, in Japan from Sony Right at the same time, I don't know which one was, was earlier. Anyway, it was one of the first portable CD players. Um, using the CDM2 drive, for those who know or are familiar with the swing arm devices from Philips, same or similar hardware to the Philips CD150, only the decoder board looks a little bit different. Um, but it's the same drive, you can use it, you can use the CD150 for spare parts, for instance. 
and someone is already curious and wants to look inside. So don't wait and don't hesitate. Let's jump right in. Should we? What do you say, my dear? Philips presenteert Compact Disc, een Nederlandse vinding. Eenvoudig te bedienen, zonder tikken, zonder krassen, zonder ruis. Philips Compact Disc voor in de huiskamer of om mee te nemen met stereo radio cassette recorder. Met Philips Compact Disc haal je eruit wat erin zit.
when I think this is amazing, it's brand new. There's not one scratch on it, no dirt, nothing. Even the speakers, the surface of the speakers is in an absolutely great condition. Um, often the surface um, is destroyed. It's just very, they're made out of wood, but very cheap, let's say that way. It's like out of the store. You might be disappointed, but I'm not going to power down because I think it will work, but I'm pretty sure it will break after some minutes. Um, if you switch on the device, the tape mechanism goes into a home position or doing some movements. And the problem is that the gear in this mechanism, they are all quite weak. They, they, they fall apart, they, they break into 1000 pieces. They all need to be replaced. And if the gear breaks and the tape mechanism is not able to execute its home position, the microcontroller who's controlling the tape mechanism will hang. So it's waiting for a signal which will never come. And in this case, you cannot open the tape mechanism anymore, or the, tape, the lid anymore. Um, and you cannot check this or use the CD player because the play, pause and stop key of the CD player are controlled by the tape microcontroller, which then hangs. Um, this is done because of the synchronous copy of both of them. So you can copy a CD, audio CD onto tape with four seconds pause and you can use the previous and next button for searching for the next track or the previous track. Well, that's why I'm not going to power it on. I will store it <laughs> as it is. I will pack it again and doing maybe the same thing the previous owner did. I just put it in a shelf and keep it for documentation purposes, maybe. I have other uh, sound machines, one, two, three or four of them <laughs> for my daily enjoyment which I'm going to use all the time. Um, they are more reliable and stable than the original one um, with some modifications I did, which I want to show you in one of the next videos. Um, I'm also going to show you another video of the maybe worst sound machine of this type I ever seen. It's in a really bad condition. I was struggling a lot if I should buy it also from uh, an online store. But anyway, I said, oh, at least I can use some spare parts. Watch that. But stay tuned. I think this is going to be amazing. We have the best perfect condition. And I think we've got the really the worst uh, Philips CD555 I've ever seen. Oh. So stay tuned. Um, well, I think there's nothing more to say. If you get the chance to get hand on one of those machines, they sound is amazing. You will love it. Uh, go buy it. I'm going to help to restore it, bring it back to life. Just contact me if you're interested. If you want to get a scan of all the um, manuals and, and papers that are included and also for um, catalogs, whatever, visit my website. You can find every information there. Have a look at my previous um, YouTube videos I made to restore this machine. Um, I have to say or to admit that I learned a lot during the last months and it would be worth to start again, all over again with the videos. Now it's quite I would say it's easier for me to repair it because it's a really a complicated thing. Um, but I'm pretty sure I make it more reliable with the updates and, and modifications I did with the new microcontroller board, the new power supply board. Well, but that's all for today. If you like what I'm doing, just click the like button, leave a comment. Like, would be interesting to hear from you. But anyway, cheers for watching. Have a great day. See you next time. Bye.